Disclaimer. This is independent research that is not connected to any government agency involved with the X-37 program. Speculation contained in this video commentary that and this is a conclusion based on theory, logic, and publicly released records. Hello, uh, hey yo, everybody. This is Sonic J with Surf Tectonics, and today I'm going to go over a video of the X-37 space plane. What is it? What's it doing? Well, it's such a large question. Today, this video, we're just going to go through the layout of what they are and what they have done for part one. So. Hope you enjoy it, and thanks for watching. Here we go. The X-37B, what is it? It's been called the orbital space plane, the orbital cargo vehicle, or just plain up OV for orbital vehicle. Currently, the X-37B is an unmanned orbital space plane, or simply put, a space drone with a payload capacity. The X Space Flight Program was conceived in joint operations with NASA, DARPA, and the U.S. Air Force to develop a military space plane that later would be manned to replace the space shuttle. In 1999, NASA turned over the program to the Air Force and DARPA as the replacement shuttle was canceled and the program switched to focusing on an unmanned orbital space vehicle. Also in 1998, the X-40A prototype was ready for test flights. But first, let's look at the long-term production plan for the X-Space project. This production plan was established in 1999 with four stages of orbital vehicle construction, each increasing in size and payload capacity. As to date, the Mark 1, 2, and 3 have achieved their mission objectives with outstanding results. The X-37B Mark III sustained a successful orbit objective of 721 days. The Mark IV X-37C has finished production and is in the final diagnostic testing phase. The expected launch date on the SpaceX BFR rocket has not been released. The X-37 achieves orbit on top of a launch vehicle rocket system where it is deployed to a low Earth orbit and is designed for a 270 day average mission length. Although as the program has advanced over time, each orbital vehicle can easily triple the original mission duration specifications. The X-37 essentially returns to Earth in the same manner as the space shuttle, designating Vandenberg Air Force Base as its desired landing runway, and like the space shuttle, the orbital vehicle can be directed to dozens of alternate landing sites. Now let's take a look at the specifications for the X-40A Mark I. The payload capacity says 10 kilolabs and I thought what is a kilolab and this is actually kind of funny NASA and the US Air Force and DARPA use one kilolab to determine their payload capacity so one kilolab is actually the average weight of a Labrador dog which is 72.5 pounds so the actually payload of the X-40A Mark I is 72.5 pounds multiplied by 10, which equals 720 pounds. I just thought that was kind of funny. So the X-40A Mark I, which was labeled ALTV Approach Landing Test Vehicle, made seven atmospheric test flights from 1996 to 2000, starting with a CH-40 drop all the way up to a high altitude 747 drop from the stratosphere as seen here in this image. With X-40 modification enhancements for each test flight, four atmospheric re-entry heat tiles as seen here for the final test. The designation was changed to the X-37 SMV-1 Space Maneuver Vehicle. The biggest lesson learned from the Space Shuttle program was to minimize waste. The X-40 
now named the X37, received final modifications from 2000 to 2001 for an orbital launch from the Space Shuttle cargo base scheduled in early 2002. The wingspans of the X-37, X-40A specs were originally designed to fit in the Space Shuttle cargo bay. In April 2002, Shuttle Mission STS-110, the X-37 SMB-1 was deployed from the Space Shuttle cargo bay and performed an unknown number of orbits successfully landing at Vandenberg Air Force Base. Now the next orbital vehicle that was produced was the X-37A Mark II which was christened the OTV-2 or Orbital Test Vehicle. It has the base scale size of 100% to gauge off other orbital vehicles which was 20% larger than the X-40A and X-37. It had a carload Cargo payload capacity of 1,450 pounds. Production was completed in 2003. Atmospheric landing testing, high altitude, white night, stratospheric carrier planes, along with U.S. Air Force 747 Special and B-52 Stratus Fortress, conducted, conducted four test flights from 2003 to 2006, of which four to five modifications were made. The X-37A wingspan was also designed to fit inside the space shuttle cargo bay. At least one was launched and orbited as the X-37A was the test bed for the Mark III X-37B dedicated orbital vehicle with regular payload capacity missions. And now to the jewel crown of the X-37 project, the X-37B, the F-150 workhorse of the Orbital Vehicle Program. After nearly 20 years of research, development, and numerous test flights, including multiple prototypes, the X-37B multi-role main orbital vehicle construction was completed in 2008. Two were produced. OV-3 and OV-4 of which five missions were launched that were publicly released on record from 2010 to current date the longest orbital duration was 712 days achieved during the OTV-5 mission launched May 20th 2017 four of the missions were launched on the Atlas V rockets and the fifth was delivered to orbit on the Falcon 9 launch vehicle. The total payload capacity is 2,900 pounds and the orbital vehicle is 31 feet in length with a wingspan of 15 feet 10 inches. The average mission length of all five launches was is 523 days. The OTV-7 message mission is scheduled for December this year via the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket delivery system. And to get a sense of scale, we will show the X-37 orbital vehicle fleet chart. The known vehicles starting with the X-40A slash X-37 or Space Maneuver Vehicle 1. And there is a representation of a six foot astronaut. And then the X 37A OV 2, the X 37B orbital vehicle 4 and 5, and the X 37C orbital vehicle, orbital test vehicle 6. And you can see the X 37B is 31 feet and the X-37C Mark IV is 49 feet in length. And this wider chart that shows the overall length of the X-37 orbital vehicles compared to the shuttle and the delivery rockets, you can see they look relatively small. Well that is because they are purposely built to fit 
in the space shuttle cargo bay because they were meant as a long-term orbital drone vehicle to be delivered by the space shuttle but of course the space shuttle was canceled so now they are being launched by the atlas 5 the eelv which has been retired also the falcon 9 falcon heavy and the recent SpaceX BFR rocket that is in the testing phase that is also scheduled to launch the X-37 Mark IV which is the larger version that is even bigger than the one we saw previously to haul six astronauts into orbit in basically a space bus. And finally, last but not least, but definitely the biggest, is the X-37C Mark IV. Currently under construction, it is designed to be 160% the size of the X-37B. The test flight will be unmanned with a payload capacity of 4,350 pounds. SpaceX's BFR rocket will be the launch delivery, delivery vehicle. The Orbital Test Vehicle 6 will be adjusted for a crew of two for the second mission. The next X-37V Orbital Vehicle 7 will be 185% the size of the X-37B, capable of transporting six crew to the International Space Station or other orbital habitats. These orbital vehicles are not as large as these photos seem to portray. This image of the X-37A shows it to be around the same length as a cargo bus with about one half the mass, with the X-37B being slightly larger. I could not find any real life photos of the X-37C because it is still under construction and public access is highly restricted. This image of what is believed to be the upgraded X-37 and X-37A gives you a good size ratio compared with the average adult male. Officially, the Air Force claims to have two X-37Bs in service with the first X-37C finished production and is undergoing preparation for the initial testing for the first launch. Unofficially, Aviation enthusiasts claim the first X-40A prototype that was modified to the orbital vehicle X-37 SMV-1 capable of spaceflight along with the X-37A that was the prototype for the X-37B are both space-worthy orbital vehicles. Because all of the X-37s look almost identical for orbital missions, they can only be gauged relative to the ground technicians or personnel working on the space planes. Without going into an in-depth breakdown of each photograph, it is likely that the X-37 fleet is comprised of one X-40A X-37 Registry Space Maneuver Vehicle 1, the X-37A Registry Orbital Test Vehicle 2 or Orbital Vehicle 2, the X-37B Orbital Vehicle 3, and the X-37 Orbital Vehicle 4, with the X-37C Orbital Test Vehicle 5 finished construction, and another X-37C undergoing the initial production phase. Thanks for watching part one of the X-37 space program. For part two, we'll be going over what exactly the X-37Bs are doing up there flying around in orbit. Once again, thanks for watching. Disclaimer. This is independent research that is not connected to any government agency involved with the X-37 program. Speculation contained in this video commentary that and this is a conclusion based on theory, logic, and publicly released records.